our presentation today is about uh, digitization and smart automation. So um, just to, uh, to uh, share with you our agenda for today, like what we are uh, we, we, uh, in our invitation that we sent out. Um, there are three uh, major topics that uh, we are covering for today. First topic I want to share with you is about uh, this thing called user experience. Uh, we'll share with you what are some of the, the new uh, enhanced uh, capability in this area. I will, I will talk to you a little bit more about uh, some of these functionality that I stated there, like home pages, alert, notification, and so forth. And then the second topic I want to talk about is uh, document management. And this is the part that uh, we want to share with you how you can uh, digitize and uh, the document that you have and how you can process those documents uh, to help you to uh, take the data from the document and process it uh, along the way. And then the third topic I want to talk about is uh, really about uh, robotic process automation. And this is the part that uh, how you can uh, automate some of your manual process using a software robots. So these are the three topics that I will be uh, covering for today. Let's begin by just uh, try to differentiate about this word called digitalization, digitization versus digitalization, right? And um, a lot of uh, people, uh, you, you, uh, you hear about uh, and these two words and, and uh, is, that with, is that a difference between these two and, and so forth? Now, you look at the definition of digitization is basically converting uh, whatever uh, analog uh, information, for example, um, your hard copy document into digital format, right? And uh, so just imagine you have uh, some of these document that you receive from your external sources, for example, your supplier send you an invoice, right? In, in hard copy format or even in a PDF uh, format, how do you then uh, convert those uh, in, you know, data into a digital format so that you can uh, use it? Okay, so that's what digitization is uh, all about. Then digitalization is basically enabling the or improving your process by using the digital technology. For example, your digital data, and it is, this is a, a fancy way of, of, of saying that you, you turn all your human driven processes to software driven, right? So when you do digitalization as you are just looking for opportunity within your business process to say that perhaps uh, in, instead of doing it manually, I can get the system to perform some of this function. Now, the next stage after digitalization is this thing called digital transformation. And digital transformation is is about really changing your entire business process, right? Digitalization, you, you don't change it. You're just basically uh, improving the business process. But if you want to do transformation, you really have to relook at your whole business process to, to uh, transform it into a, a different uh, way of running a business. For example, if you know, you, you may decide that uh, tomorrow that you, you want to to, uh, to uh, let people uh, buy a product uh, only through uh, internet, for example, that you no longer uh, allow your product to be sold uh, in a, a normal brick and mortar, just like how Amazon and uh, the Taobao of the world is doing, you know, that they, they don't have a, a, a brick and mortar kind of a, a present, you know, so that, that is really what we call a digital transformation, right? But if, as you can see, you know, there are a lot of, uh, uh, opportunity for you to digitalize your operation, uh, you know, for example, implementing integration to any third party application, doing uh, workflow approval, getting alert and so forth. This is like just some of the example how you can, uh, you know, go on the uh, digital bandwagon. Okay. So the first thing that I want to share with you is the, this thing called user experience, right? Um, how we wanted to uh, help you to uh, achieve is that uh, is really about uh, 
how you can better collaborate and improve your efficiency, how in, in the way you interact with the system. For in, in this example, how you interact uh, with uh, M3. I, I reckon that many of you have been using M3 for, for many years and M3 really form a, a major part of your day-to-day -day operation. So, so it is timely that uh, you look at uh, what are the ways that you can help your users or, or even yourself to, uh, to better collaborate with your fellow colleagues. Right? Now, this is just an uh, example of, a, of what we call a user interface. You know, I, I, as some of you may be very familiar, this is how uh, an M3 or a Movex screen look like. Right. In this particular example, this is basically an item uh, master screen. You know, um, this is how the screen look like. Right, uh, a very um, basic uh, uh, program for you to access the item. You know, it just show you in in this particular format. Right, but um, I, I believe many of you is uh, uh, this and. Uh, Something more, right? Uh, that, uh, how the, the user interface has been changed to what we call user experience. Why the word uh, user experience is that you you want to do a lot more with uh, what you are seeing in M3 right now, right? And this is a part that um, we introduced the uh, new U user experience screen. We call it H5 for 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 you to uh, to uh, interact with the system, right? Now. This is a new item master screen, right? As what compared to what you've seen just now, right? As you can see, um, the information is a lot more uh, 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 presentable, right? Um, the, 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 the user interface looks uh, slightly different, right? I'll share with you what are some of the changes as you compare. It's the same uh, program that you, uh, you see earlier, but uh, now it uh, looks a lot more uh, interesting, right? Uh, just to highlight a couple of uh, things that are different from what uh, you've been used to is, uh, for example, if you look at the the highlighted one, the call status here, as you can see now, uh, status, uh, you, you can uh, configure it to reflect instead of numbers, you can put wording and even put some color coding to it, you know, to denote certain statuses, right? Uh, maybe for uh, statuses release, you want to put a green color and so forth. So the intent is that whoever that uh, come to see the system and by just looking at the, the color, they can straight away tell what is the status. The, the second thing that you you'll notice at the top there is that uh, existing call sorting order and the view, right? Now you can sort whatever uh, view that you want that, you know, from the system, right? Instead of just uh, limited by what uh, previously uh, uh, limited uh, sorting sequence. Now we can have a lot more uh, way for you to sort. And also the view panel at the top here where you can actually filter what you want to see on the column basis by just uh, going to this uh, this uh, pencil uh, mark there, you, you open up, you click on that, then it will give you all the other selection of view that you can display on this particular program. So it's just not limited uh, at what you, you see right now, right? You have the flexibility to include that. And then you also have this thing called contact uh, sharing. As, as you can see, you know, uh, in this particular uh, uh, item, when if I if I hover my, my cursor on the first line, I see a picture of the product. Later, I'll share with you how you can actually include such images or any kind of document into this particular program, right? So, and, and that particular uh, pictures is related to this particular line. So if you move your cursor down to different line, a different picture will show up or different information. So this is, this is how our new user experience screen look like, or, or some may still call it the user interface, right? And this is another example. This is a purchase order uh, program. I, you, as you can see, I can uh, have a copy of the purchase order that you generated to your to your supplier shows up. Right. I will share a little bit more on the uh, 
uh, this part, uh, what we call document management later, right? Um, this is an, um, another example, right? This is a uh, customer orders uh, screen. As you can see, as you enter the, the particular order for that customers, on your right hand side, you will see an on hand balance of that particular item, right? Now, of course, you can say that, well, I can see this information even today. Yes, how you can do that is that uh, you, you probably have to jump onto another uh, program in uh, M3 to see the same information. And of course, you probably won't be able to see it in graphical format. But in this case, it's, it's, uh, it can present in a, it's a graphical format. Then at, at the, the bottom right, you can see a credit limit for this particular customers, you know, uh, in one uh, quick grants and, and so forth. So this is just an example of what uh, the new uh, H5 uh, user interface uh, look like. But there are more, you know. So you think that uh, that, that particular user interface already uh, uh, very chunky, but we have something more and uh, we call it home pages, right? Uh, just like how you you surf the internet, you know, you, you go to a particular home page. The first page you see is always the 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 most nicest uh, page where you 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 know the, you want to impress upon the people that come to your home pages, and and this is an example of a, a home page that you you created. It can look something like this, right? It has its own banner at the top, and then. Uh, have uh, all the other information at the bottom, right? All the other information that you see at the bottom is what we call a widget, right? I will share a, a little bit more about what are the kind of widget that you can have, you know, in your home pages, right? So this is this is the sign-on screen that when your user come to the system every day, right? This is what they see, right? And what you see here can be personalized by different role. Right. For example, I can personalize the uh, home pages by, in this example, a customer service uh, manager. Right. So when 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 he or she sign on to the page, this is what he sees every day. Right. As you can see, there are some widget uh, uh, display here. Right. You can have, for example, uh, your uh, standard menu. Right. Even the menu, you look, it looks different now. I can put icons and and so forth. You know save on your favorite and then at the at the uh, left bottom left you you see this thing called customer service monitor and this is the part that you for example you want to uh, to monitor certain statistic right to say for example you want to know how many customer order that has been stopped meaning that it hits credit limit so when you click then it opens up that that particular order that has this uh, problem and so forth and then you, on the right hand side, you see this thing called alert, right? Uh, I'll share more about what is alert and so forth. And at the bottom right, you see this uh, customer document and so forth. And then in the middle, you can have other information. For example, if you are doing customer service, you may want to quickly uh, take a look at what are some of the promotion that you're having right now. So that when, when you receive a phone call from your customer, you can quickly disseminate that information to your customers. And also some uh, some uh, graph and so forth, right? So the purchase manager uh, home pages can look different also, right? Uh, slightly different uh, information being displayed, right? Um, at, as you can see at the bottom right hand corner, you see this thing called post. This is a very interesting uh, function. I'll share more about that uh, later. You know, uh, basically is that how you can. Uh, leverage on uh, the messaging capability within the, the home pages, right? And then this is just as a different uh, uh, presentation of our home pages for financial controller where people like to see numbers, for example, right? So the information can be presented in, in such a manner. Now, you must be wondering how do we go about uh, doing this uh, home pages now? At the heart of this uh, this uh, widget that I share with you, there's this uh, uh, functionality or feature we call event hub, right? So uh, 
what is actually an event event hub? Uh, just just think of it is like uh, is is a method for us to disseminate information from one one event to from the what we call publisher to the subscriber, right? So an event is something that happened, right? Obviously, something that is very important that you want to know or you want to track, right? And an event hub is uh, basically a, a, an application that, uh, in this example, sits in M3. So what it does is that uh, it distributes the event from the publisher to the subscriber. So what, what is actually a publisher? Publisher basically is an application that produces the event for others to consume. And the subscriber is basically the, the, the application that you want to, uh, to uh, consume the, the particular information, All right? So uh, bear with me, I will, I will, I will explain uh, later how you can apply in the way you use M3, for example, All right? So let's take a very simple example, uh, the relationship between uh, a publisher and a subscriber. Let's say you take, for example, that you wanted to monitor some of the missed call that you receive, right, uh, to the organization. So just imagine your, your telephone switchboard is actually your publisher, right? And then you have all the call coming in and you want to track what are some of the missed call that go through your telephone switchboard, right? So the event hub will process that and then it will we will send the uh, particular information to uh, what we call a data warehouse. Basically, you just want to print out a report. But you don't want to uh, basically uh, capture every single missed call that you receive, you know. Perhaps what you want to do is that you want to capture what are some of the missed call that I receive. Um, let's say between the five minutes, I received, let's say, three missed call. I only want to capture that. Right, so uh, event analytics is uh, an, uh, uh, another more sophisticated way for you to do more filtering so that you don't receive every time there's a missed call that you want to print out a report or, or capture in the report. Right? You just, you're inter interested is that if you have uh, received at least three missed calls within a five minute period. Right? So you want to only capture those, those uh, instances. So now how, how do you then apply in, in uh, M3, right? Now just imagine M3 is a publisher, right? And then uh, between M3 and I now, as there, are, there are two methods that you can uh, trigger the event or, or how event is been, uh, it's been uh, triggered. Number one is that uh, there's this predefined M3 application messages and event. There are about 600 of them. It's already predefined in M3. So when that event happened, you can use the event hub to publish the messages to the subscriber. Now, what, what are some, some of the example of, of the M3 application event or messages, right? This is just an example. Uh, this is an example of finance event and messages, right? As you can see, them, it's already predefined in M3, right? You don't have to, uh, you don't have to crack your heads to think, right? Um, for example, you know, uh, zero, oh, sorry. Um, you have a situation, you have a zero price, sales price for an order, right? It will trigger an event and then the event hub will process that uh, event and then will pass the messages to the subscriber, right? Likewise, um, you can also have uh, some, uh, what we call application messages that is already predefined. Right. For example, uh, you wanted to uh, have a messages where you when the, you want to review certain supplier invoices. Right. These are event that you already or, or the system already uh, predefined. So all you need to do is just to say that I want to be uh, subscribed when this event happened. Right. There's another type of event that you can use is when there's certain changes or what we call operation on the M3 database table, right? Or, or program, etc. Right? This is some. This is like uh, when something happened in M3. For example, somebody changed the price. 
right? If that changing a price is not defined in the standard M3 application messages and event, you want to be informed, right? So, um, and, and in here, this example is that um, for this uh, operation on the database changes, you can specify up to three condition, right? Now, this is just an example how we set up the event hub to configure in, 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 uh, in this uh, instances. And this is, uh, as you can see, there are three conditions that you can specify it, right? This is, a, this is an example whereby, let's say a customer place an order with you, you want to know when the order quantity of that particular item is less than 10. It's just an example. So if let's say a, a customer order a certain item and, and if the quantity is less than uh, that value, you want to send out uh, messages. Right? Later, I will share with you what, are, what do I mean by messages and so forth, right? So this is an example of how you can configure and you can configure up to three condition, right? Now, if you want more condition and rules, uh, then you can, of course, use what we call event analytic to do that process, right? Now, the question also why three and not four and, and so forth, um, it has something to do with uh, how the system performance when you set up too many operation, then you may potentially affect the, the system. So uh, using event analytics uh, is a lot more sophisticated. It, it involves a little bit of uh, programming work to handle this. So it is a lot more technical when it comes to using event analytics. Or else if you were to use the, the standard M3 uh, application messages and the, the operation there, it is basically just configure, you know, no, no programming need to be done. So now when uh, event have processed that particular event and when it happened, then it will output uh, whatever messages to an application. For example, in, in this example, you can output it to a home pages, right? And when you output it, it can come in the form of a alert, notification, or a task. Now, alert basically is a instance whereby you you need to take action or, or, or on that particular messages. For example, you the when you receive an alert, you need to acknowledge that you seen the alert. For example, you read it and you say, okay, I've read it, done. You can, of course, use it to uh, share that information to other people within your organization and so forth, right? So something that you need to uh, take action, right? Whereas a notification is something that uh, you've been notified, but you do not have to do anything, right? You don't even need to say that you read it, right? So obviously for alert is something that you want is something that you define for exceptional case. For example, things that are not supposed to happen, when it happen, you need to be alerted so that you, you read it and um, you want to take action on it. Whereas no, notification is something that, you know, is a normal thing that happen. For example, you know, you, you notify that uh, and uh, a customer invoice has been sent to a customer, right? That kind of notified the salesperson, for example, right? Nothing that the salesperson need to needs to do, right, other than being informed. Now, a task is uh, basically a workflow, right? And this is whereby you need to do uh, approval for that particular task, right, or, or rejection of that particular task or what we normally call workflow, right? So these are a couple of ways where you can, uh, uh, the event hub can process. Of course, there are many other um, uh, subscriber to the event hub it can uh, triggers, for example, passing the the messages or, or what we call uh, via API to another third party application, for example. Right? These are these are what the, the system can handle. Right? So the the event hub is really a heart of what you see in the home pages when you regard to alert, the notification, and the the workflow. Right. So I mentioned earlier, right, there's an alert capability uh, between uh, home pages. This is the part that you can uh, you can even uh, monitor how many alert you receive per week and so forth, you know. So um, you can have different alert that tells you, you know, for example, a purchase order has been uh, created and so forth, right. 
Then uh, you also have the task and the workflow. Later, we'll, we'll do a demo on uh, the, the task and uh, workflow. And this is a part that you can actually build your own workflow. You know, all this sim schematic diagram that you see is something that you can define, you know, how your route uh, going to be and who need to approve it. And then later, I'll share a lot more in the demo on the, what are some of the capability within our workflow application, right? So now this is another very interesting feature called post or chat. Now just just imagine that uh, today I'm sure many of your user, even yourself, you know, is very uh, fond of using WhatsApp. You know, if you want to uh, 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 discuss something with your fellow colleagues or even any external people, you know, you 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 pick up your phone and then you start keying to your WhatsApp, and you know, then the the person instantly receive and then he can reply and you know yeah you capture a series of uh, conversation and so forth just imagine instead of using a whatsapp you use our chat functionality now the difference is that whatever conversation you have for example let's say it's related to a, a particular customer right all the conversation is stored in the system versus if you use whatsapp today you know th those those are outside of the system Right, well, this is inside the system, right? So you can keep track of all the conversation that you have. You know, you can even post link in the the chat, and uh, when when somebody click on the link, it can open up, for example, an, an M3 uh, program, right? So all this conversation is being captured inside the system. So by using that, it it it, it makes the people collaborate better. You know, so this is really taking advantage. You know, like what you guys have been used to, you know? So the example of what a, a, a chat functionality is, is there, right? Another very interesting uh, capability is this, this thing called Stream, you know? Stream is like, um, it's like a mini project management software. Just imagine that, uh, let's say uh, you need to organize a warehouse sales, right? Two months from now. And there are series of activity that you need to do. Right, and, uh, see, and and you need to get other people involved. So you can actually define your, your warehouse sales uh, step that you need to perform in this particular stream and then get people to enroll to it. Even external people like your, your supplier or your customer can participate, right? You define what are the steps that you need to go through. It's like a checklist that you say, okay, this is done or not done and so forth, right? So it's like a mini, uh, like I said, there are project management uh, software tools inside there. And then you can have, you know, define the kind of due date that you want to uh, define when certain things not happen, then you will send all the uh, notification or reminder and so forth. So so it's a one good way of you uh, getting people to be involved in uh, the activities. Right? So stream is also part of uh, what we, uh, the capability. Right. Of course, all the things that uh, you've seen there, the alert and uh, the task and the post, you, all of them can be viewed from your mobile devices, right? including the Apple Watch. Right? So nothing here that you see you know, means that you, you can only use the desktop. You can use the mobile to, uh, to perform uh, or, or see, you, know, you can approve a workflow from your your mobile devices and, and so forth. Because uh, email is also one of the capability within uh, what we can offer. So now what, what I'm gonna do is just to uh, share with you a little bit about the, the home pages, right? What we'll, we'll show you is uh, an example of uh, 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 home pages that we have uh, created. Right? And we will also share how you can create your own home pages. Of course, you can create from scratch, or you can take advantage of what someone else has done, and you just uh, make some changes to it, and then and call it your own, right? So, let me just run through with this present. We'll go, for example, on the top of the pages. As you can see, and I scroll down, then there are various different widgets that you can uh, put in into the uh, the home pages. Uh, quick link is uh, basically the uh, 
M3 program that you normally want to access uh, quickly, for example, your favorite, uh, you can set it up there. You can also set up uh, external link, for example, certain uh, web uh, website that you want to access uh, all the time, as well as the uh, messages that you can uh, uh, put up a widget uh, when certain uh, event happen, for example, when a new PO has been created, you know, you need to be uh, uh, informed. Right? As well as some uh, monitor that you can set up, you know, to capture some specific statistic that uh, you want to track. Right? As you scroll down now, you can see I can add more um, uh, monitor to uh, the widget. You know, I want to know what are the active items that I have in my system. For example, you can uh, set it up. As well as a uh, standard M3 uh, menu, right? um, just like how you access M3, the full function menu can also be, uh, uh, be part of the widget uh, that uh, is available. As you can see now, um, I'm, I'm uh, accessing the post or the chat function, whereby you can uh, put up a, a conversation with your fellow colleagues, you know, that uh, you work with on a particular uh, incident and so, and so forth. And all the comments and the uh, notes are, are been captured and, and available for viewing. Uh, you can even drill back uh, from the particular post that you are uh, set up and there are many, many posts or conversation that you can uh, uh, track. Uh, task list is uh, basically a workflow. And this is an example is uh, when you you need to access a workflow and you need to assign to someone else other than yourself, or you can even uh, draw back to the M3 screen, right? And uh, in the bottom here, you see some uh, basic information that uh, you can personalize what you want to see as well as adding any kind of attachment or if there's any attachment already uh, been attached to the workflow. And you can see a workflow progress to know uh, who is uh, now uh, accessing the workflow and pending the approval. And you can also key in any specific note and you can save the note. And uh, so whoever that uh, access the workflow can see the particular note. And you can of course approve and uh, reject the workflow. There's also a widget on the notification list whereby uh, you are notified when certain uh, event happen. Just like the workflow, you can see some, uh, some basic information as well as uh, the alert list. Right? Uh, alert is uh, whereby you need to uh, do something about it. For example, you need to assign to somebody to read this or you can then uh, assign to yourself and to no notify that you actually read it. You know. And you can, of course, uh, put in some additional note, note uh, so that uh, you can save the particular information. And you can click done and, you know, to indicate that you're actually aware of the particular alert. Um, there are more statistics that uh, monitor that you can see over here. Uh, any kind of a monitor that you want uh, can be set up in the system or in the, the home pages itself, right? Uh, to track all the plan, PO, and so forth, you know, so that you do not forget certain uh, activity that you need to do. There's also some uh, M3 information viewer in graphical or pie chart or bar chart you can set up. Here is interesting is that you can also set up your internal application. There's non M3, for example. In this case, we have our own uh, portal that we uh, we put it in, as well as um, things like uh, Excel sheet, you know, or even Microsoft Word document. Anything that uh, you want to uh, access from there. Now we want to show you how you can actually create your new home pages, right? As you can see, there are many different uh, home pages created for different roles. So what you can do is that you can actually take one of the uh, the home pages that has been created and you modify from there, right? Or you can create your own uh, new home pages. Now in this example, is I, I took the uh, purchase manager uh, uh, home pages and I decided to add uh, an uh, alert list and alert status to that purchase manager homepage. And then after that, I will save it and call it my new 
home pages. As you can see, you know, the, the widget uh, that I've just uh, uh, added now shows up and I can resize the particular widget to whatever size that I want. I can move it around, I can change the sequence and so forth. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's flexible. It doesn't need any kind of programming. And after you're done, you can save it. So that's what it is to, uh, info on pages. So next, I will I would like to demo the uh, the workflow, like uh, where you how you can do a digital approval on a particular workflow. So the the demo scenario that we are we are going through today is a uh, is a purchase order approval, right? So uh, we we will create a purchase order and then we'll submit for approval. Then how we can then route to the approving. Uh, officer's uh, email and then from there he click on the link and uh, opens up the uh, approval screen he can scroll down and and uh, take a look at the content and then uh, to do approve and reject and so forth after you approve for example then the the uh, email will be set up to mention that this workflow have been approved and then after that we'll we'll go through and show you a little bit of what are some of the the setting that you can uh, do with with the workflow, like uh, 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 and and so forth. Now let's uh, take a look at a purchase order approval uh, workflow. Uh, this is an example of a workflow that uh, we created. Um, I first uh, accessing the uh, the M3 program where I have uh, pre created a a purchase order, but I have not yet submitted uh, for approval. So this example is I, as a purchase manager, I have pre-created a, a purchase order. I go into that particular purchase order that I created earlier, and I just have to click a send for approval uh, button, and the uh, workflow has been triggered. An approval request uh, been sent for the manager to approve it. So the manager can uh, then uh, has to go to the uh, email and he can see a notification and then he click on the link, he will open up the, uh, the approval uh, screen where he can do example of a drill back to the particular M3 program to take a look at the detail or there are some uh, high level detail that shows up or I can even assign to someone else to take a look at the particular workflow. So in this example, I assign to myself, right? And there's some uh, summary information that I can define on the screen what I want to see. I can also have an attachment or I can add a particular attachment to the workflow. There's also a workflow progress uh, indicator and I, I can also uh, uh, key in any kind of uh, notes and uh, save the notes. So when the workflow progress, uh, the subsequent person can uh, see the, the notes and I can, of course, approve or reject the workflow. In this example, I just approved the workflow. So if I go back to the task, I will see that uh, the workflow has been approved, has been indicated here. So if I go back to my email, then I can see that uh, it informed that the purchase order has been uh, approved. So now let's take a look at the, the uh, details on the workflow. I can see, you as you can see at the top there, I designed the, the, the workflow uh, uh, activity from there on the diagram. I can have different kind of messages I want to show up. I can even want to define what are the due date for that. A particular workflow. It can be up to days, hours, or even minutes. Right? So these are examples of some of the parameters that you can, can set up. You can also set up the approval matrix. This is where you define the, for example, for a PO, uh, if it's above 1,000, who should approve it? Uh, if it's below 1,000, who, who can uh, approve the workflow and so forth? And you can uh, edit the distribution list and, and so forth. You can even decide whether you want to use email to inform the particular uh, users 
and so forth. There's also a, a escalation and reminder that you can set up uh, where you can uh, define, for example, when the particular workflow is not being uh, taken action for specific time, right? what should you do and, and so forth. For example, you're sending reminder or, or so forth or, or escalate to the next uh, person to uh, approve and so forth. So these are the flexibility that you can uh, define in the uh, workflow uh, setup, right? And uh, when you can, you can also define when we do escalation, whether you send email reminder and so forth. So that is an example of a, how you can uh, use a workflow uh, approval. So to, to summarize uh, what uh, we have uh, just presented on the user experience, right? Um, I, I share with you on the home pages. Uh, basically, by having a home page, it will greatly improve your productivity. As you can see, a consolidated and summary view of some very important information that something that you wanted to uh, to track on a daily basis and so forth, where you can you can define your own. And then alert and notification basically help you to keep a breeze of all the important exceptional event that you want to track. I, many, many of you have come to us and say that, you know, I, I want the system to provide me alert. Tell me when something happened instead of me going to the system and find out myself, you know, just come to me. So alert and notification are uh, capability that uh, fulfill that requirement. And then tasks and workflow is, you know, allow you to be able to define your own workflow, you know, how we want the low workflow to, to be and what kind of escalation, the approval authority and so forth, you know, and then you can, of course, doing a digital approval, right? So, so bottom line is that, um, as you can see, the, the really uh, what you can do now with, uh, with this uh, user experience is a lot more than what you've been used to, right? A lot of information has been uh, made available to you. Like, like I mentioned, you know, the, even chat functionality is, is actually now uh, part of what uh, we can offer, you know, so that you can help you to collaborate with your fellow colleague, right? Now, the next topic I wanted to talk about is the, really about the data capture and document management, right? So, First off, I want to share with you um, this component called Info Document Management, or in short called IDM. And this is the part that, uh, to put it uh, simply, is, is a repository of document that you can uh, 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 have in your system, right? And when we talk about document, document can come from many different sources, right? It can come from the document that you capture. Later, I'll share with you you know, how you go about doing it, right? Basically, you know, it's all these external document that in, in hard copy format, you can then now using our capture solution to can process the document, extract the data from that particular document, right? The document can also come from email and all you know, your faxes and so forth that uh, your external uh, supplier or customer sent to you, right? It can also be an uh, internal generated document like for example, your company policy. Uh, you, you want a, a places to uh, to store that particular document, right? Just the other day when I, I presented a similar content, you know, uh, one of our customer mentioned, uh, yeah, you know, just to keep track of the minute of an AGM, sometimes it's a challenge, right? Uh, nobody knows where's the latest copy and so forth, right? So this is a good way for you to uh, be able to uh, use this system and and uh, and uh, move a more structured way for you to uh, to store the document. It can also be a scanned hard copy document, right? Certain document you may not want to extract the data, but you you still want to to store an image of that particular document, and you want to be able to tell that oh this this is a for example a contract from a from a with the customers, right? Now, um, document can also be a printout from uh, M3, you know, so, um, for example, customer invoice 
and so forth that you generated from M3, you know, it can also be stored in the IDM. All right, it can be a printout from other application. If today you use other third-party application on CRM or WMS, right, it, it may generate documents and the document can also uh, be stored in the IDM. As well as the this thing called M3 contextual, right? Earlier I saw uh, we, we mentioned that uh, in the H5 screen, you know, um, you can see a copy of a document that you have generated, right? And meaning to say that uh, uh, as you can see the arrow, it can go both way. I can I can create the document uh, on the fly from the the M3 screen and then store in the IDM, or I can. I can add the document in IDM and display it in the M3 screen, for example. So that, that's what uh, IDM is uh, able to handle. Right? Now, let's talk about a little bit about the capture solution. Right? Um, this is a solution, this is new, right? uh, whereby you can uh, basically extract any particular information from any hard copy or information that coming from external sources. This is an, a typical uh, process flow for a document, you know, how people process a document. Take for example, that you receive document for some of the external sources. It could be via um, a physical hard copy document that you scan in, right? Or it could be uh, somebody send you an attachment via email, for example, or it could be something that come through the fax machine and so forth, right? Or, 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 or any kind of a document that you 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 access from a, a, a portal, maybe a, a, a customer a supplier portal and so forth. I right, so all this uh, particular uh, data or document then can come through the system, right? And then what the system does is that it does this thing called image processing. Right, it take document and you try to uh, uh, look at the image and improve the image. For example, you could be that uh, when your person scan the document, it uh, it is on a, a tabale format, you know, so it, it will correct that example. Now, the third thing you do is that it does this thing called classification. And this is the part that you will try to say that, okay, the document that, that I'm going through now, what, what document is it? Is it a supplier invoice? Is it a contract? Or is it a... a a agreement or, or, or so forth. So you classify for you, right? The thing what it does is that uh, it does this thing called extraction. And this is the part that you say, okay, if this is a supplier invoice, I, I want you to attract, uh, extract this particular information from the document. For example, I want to attract uh, the, extract the uh, supplier invoice number, the invoice date, supplier name, the item and so forth, right? So you, you specify the system when you you see a supply invoice. What are the information that you want to extract? And then uh, next thing it does is do this validation. After it does the extraction, you want to make sure that you know he extracted correctly. And this is the part that uh, when you when you uh, when the, the the document is uh, what we call perfect document, then there's nothing that you need to validate. But if there's anything that the system is not sure, that's why you will do the inter intervention, right? To do the, the validation. Once it's done, then you deliver to the application. For example, in, in this case, you go to M3, right? So, so that that particular data that you have uh, extracted can be used to process. If you take, for example, a supplier invoice, you know, what it does is that, let's say you receive your supplier invoice that you can scan in or your supplier send it, via email. After you go through this process, the data is extracted and then passed to M3 and then it will do further processing, for example, to do all the three-way match. So there is no need for you to do any kind of a manual data entry anymore if you use this solution over here, right? So now, what, what, uh, what I want to emphasize that this thing that I highlighted uh, in, you know, uh, circle in red, uh, is can be totally automated. That means that you don't even need any intervention. Of course, if you have a hard copy invoices, really you need somebody to scan, but actually this is a very low value job that anybody can do, do it, you know. Even the reception can do it. Just have to put it into your 
MFP printer, you know, you know, you know, photocopier machine, and then let it scan, and then doesn't, you know, and then the the data is stored in a, a particular folder in your in your MFP printer, and then there's a there's a function within the software that will will listen to all this. Uh, uh, just like how the event hub works, and then even you see a document from your MFP printer, it will process it. So it's nothing that you need to uh, to uh, intervene, right? So the only intervention is that uh, when you want to uh, so call uh, uh, how should I say it? Uh, do a validation, right? Then uh, then uh, you 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 will need to uh, correct it, you know. For example, when you read a certain field and it's not correctly, it's not very sure, then you ask you to validate. Other than that, every, everything else is uh, automated, right? Now, when you when you do validation, there's actually only one screen that the, the user need to see your process. And this is the part that he will show you, you know, what, what the particular image of the, the document, and then he will highlight to you what are the, the, the field that you think that you need you to verify, right? On the left here, you see that all the you have the 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 green color and the 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 red color traffic light. You know these are the document that is processed. Only the red one will require intervention. Other than that, the rest are all passed through, right? So only one screen that the user need to uh, to access, right? And if you look at the example of if you if you do an account payable. Uh, uh, invoice uh, processing using this solution. There's really uh, a great saving that you can uh, get from doing that whereby, you know, um, take for example, uh, one of our customer uh, processed about 135,000 invoices. We only need two people working. Right? You can never achieve that if, if you today are doing manually uh, processing that whereby you need to key in the information to your system and so forth or else using this uh, way you you practically eliminate the need for you to do any kind of data entry right and uh, i mentioned that uh, the contextual document management you know uh, in the m3 screen you can see that particular document that you uh, uh, extracted and so forth right this is just an example of the document management uh, system uh, when if you were to go in there, this is what you can see. Later, we'll have a demo on the document management together with the data capture solution, right? All right. So now what, what I will do next uh, is to do a demo, right? Uh, the scenario is that uh, assume that you receive a supply invoice via email, right? You receive an email from your supplier on the invoice. And then we have created uh, two invoice. One is a perfect invoice. Everything is perfect. Another one is I, I, I smear one of the few on the, the supply invoice and then see what the system uh, do, you know, or, or need you to uh, in, uh, intervene. And then how the system then flow through to the uh, info document management. From there, you can see the, the invoice that you have processed in the M3. And then of course you can then go and uh, Go inside the info document and then we'll share with you inside the info document what can you do with it you know uh, how do you uh, be able to see the information what you know what what can you process from that particular uh, document okay okay now let's uh, take a look at the info document management i sign on to my email and i just see that there are two invoices that i received from my supplier right now, one of the invoice uh, is a perfect invoice. Everything is perfect. And um, the other invoice is whereby I smear uh, one of the few, which is the invoice number. This just to show you what will happen when the, uh, the data capture system capture this particular invoice. Uh, as you can see, uh, there are two invoices that have uh, been uh, processed by the system. One of them is, uh, is uh, having problem that is indicated in red. As you can see, it will point to the particular few uh, in question, which uh, as you can see, there's some smear on the invoice number. So it will point out to you that uh, you can't read this uh, properly, and then you then need to validate and uh, input the correct invoice number. So uh, 
that's all the person from the account department need to do and just to correct the particular invoice number and i go back uh, to my uh, m3 uh, program as you can see that uh, particular invoice uh, shows up in the m3 uh, screen and uh, once i click and i can open up the uh, invoice and i see the the, the the whole image of the invoice right um, this is a uh, the invoice that uh, they have some smear uh, to it. Uh, after we correct it, you know, it uh, reflect the correct invoice number as you can see from from the screen. Now, this is an example of what uh, the structure of the document manager. It consists of uh, two things, which is the attribute as well as the property. The attribute is the field that you want to capture, and the property is all the system value. For example, when is the particular invoice being created? And, and who created it and so forth, right? So um, from the M3 screen, you can uh, access the document management from there, right? Um, and when you click and you open up the, the info document uh, management uh, system, And you can also go back to M3 from there, and then uh, you can, of course, see the particular document from there. Right? You can also access the info document by just clicking on the button at the bottom there, as you can see. Now, this is an example of the, the supply invoice that we, we saw earlier. Right? This is all the different attributes that we define for that particular uh, document. right? Uh, there's also the property that I mentioned earlier. You know, this is uh, the all the system uh, uh, parameter that uh, you have defined. For example, when was it modified, was it created, and so forth. Next, uh, we want to show you uh, how you can add a document from the info document. Right? This is all the document type that I created. An uh, example I'm doing now is I, I, I'm adding a document say for a company policy that I, I want to uh, put into the library as you can put up all the different document name and specify the property they require for example the document that sorry the, the attribute that you want to uh, define right the description and and so forth right. And then uh, you just uh, also uh, upload the particular file right uh, from uh, anywhere right? this is an example that i created a, a uh, microsoft word document on the company policy right? so once i upload it i can just save it right once it's saved you can see a, a thumbnail of that particular document that i've just uh, added to the info document management as you can see, I can see the history and the version of that particular uh, document. Right. Now, uh, the next thing I want to show you is that how you can do searches uh, from the document. Right. For example, I want to search a, a particular supply invoice number. And the moment I key in the invoice number and I do search, it will show up uh, which document consists this particular invoice number. Right, and then you can, uh, uh, of course, uh, go inside the document and take a look at it. Right, on top of the the, the search by the the uh, attribute, I can also search by a particular uh, free text view. For example, in this case, I want to search uh, any document has the word bonus. Now, this is a part that. Uh, it will just scan through all the document and show you which are the document that has the worst bonus. Right? As you can see, then I can uh, of course access the document with the, the word uh, bonus. As in a library, you can check up that the particular document, uh, usually when you want to do some uh, changes or modification to it. So when you check up the document, no one else can access that uh, particular document. As you check out, it will show you that you know uh, you are now uh, going to version two of that particular document, right? So in this example, I'm just gonna make some uh, 
changes to the document so that I can uh, save it and call it the uh, version number two, right? And you can see the um, I can upload the particular document and uh, you will then notice that uh, it will be I can uh, save it the document and you can see the version two of that uh, document. Then after I've done, right? For example, here I can check the document back in. Then uh, whoever that has access to this uh, company policy document will be able to see it. I can also download that document and I can download it as where the document type is. So in this case, it's a, it's a Microsoft uh, Word that I've created. So I download and download as a Microsoft Word. Or I can download that as a PDF, right? Instead of a Microsoft Word. So you don't have to convert the document to a PDF, right? You can of course print the document as well as to do any kind of a copy, delete and archive. Of course, with the right authority and security that you set up, right? And uh, if I want to, uh, this is a part that uh, I want to combine these two documents and do a download. So when I when I download as a PDF, the two documents are assembled together. Right? So I, I have the flexibility of uh, having to do that without having to uh, uh, physically combine it outside of the info document. I can do something like that. Okay, um, the next thing I wanted to uh, share is uh, uh, this thing called configurable XML. Now, this one may sound a little bit technical to some of you. Um, we have a, a change in the way we uh, configure document. As some of you may be aware that uh, we use a, a component called StreamServe to do all the formatting for all this external document. Previously, you use a function called stream file and page out to handle some of this uh, processing or, or configuration. All right, we are, now we are we are changing it the way we use this thing called a configurable XML. Uh, practically, is that uh, what happened is that all the print file that generated from Memtree now can go to a, 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 a XML format. And then from there, it goes to a new component uh, called uh, Storyteller, right? Uh, it's, it's a component uh, 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 we use to, uh, to a software called OpenText, which is the, the, the parent company for StreamSurf right now. So it has an upgraded version of the StreamSurf, right? And uh, it uses an upgraded function called a Storyteller. Right to do all the formatting. Now, what 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 I wanted to to highlight uh, is that uh, by using um, this method of doing formatting, it, it created a lot more flexibility for us. For example, it used to be that uh, anytime we need to uh, add additional field, for example, right, we practically has to customize it using the uh, the uh, the M3 customization tool called MAK, right, and uh, that created a lot of challenges in terms of uh, having to uh, to uh, to uh, change the document you know we practically have to modify the document or else using the XML method is that uh, all the all the printout coming from m3 now the print file is in the XML format then we we basically can uh, have the the function under a program called CMS zero six to add additional field and, and so forth without having to do any kind of programming right and then likewise when we do uh, any kind of a configuration we use the solid teller which offer a lot more flexibility in, in the way we process that and then uh, there is a built-in plugin from the the xml to the info document management meaning to say that any kind of document that you generated from uh, open text uh, with storyteller it can go directly to uh, info document management as you see just now uh, in the contextual document management system there so that this is a 
is a wonderful way. You know, it help us to save a lot of time in terms of uh, you know configuring the, the the document. So, what are some of the benefits uh, that I presented on the document management? Uh, first is that on the smart uh, capture solution, basically it help you to eliminate all the manual data entry. Right, uh, as I mentioned, you can extract the data from all these unstructured document that you you have. The second thing is that the con contextual document management allow you to be able to uh, have more accessibility of all these important document, right? That it shows up in your M3 instead of you having to look for it when the customer asks you for it, right? So these are all uh, accessible to you now. And then for uh, uh, the document management, basically is that it help you to build a paperless uh, kind of uh, system. And then it, it, it give you the e-library kind of function. So all document that you, you have in the organization can go into the info document management, right? Regardless of whether it come from M3 or non-M3 or whether it's hard copy. Now, if you want the data to be extracted, you can also do the data capture solution, right? Now you may say that, well, what if uh, the data that I, I extracted, I, I don't want to go to M3, no problem. You can go to a database or even to an Excel file up to you, you know, how you want to take the data from there. And then the configurable XML is uh, basically is easier and more flexible for us to do any kind of document uh, 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 configuration, right? So th these are the example of what uh, you can use to, uh, to, uh, to uh, process the, the document, right? So the next topic that I wanted to talk about is uh, RPA or robotic process automation, right? Um, this is not an, an M3 uh, functionality, right? But it's a application or software that we have been uh, started to uh, do um, in response to many customers that wanted a more quicker way of uh, doing automation, right? Oops, let me just. Hmm. Uh, let me just uh, see what is uh, happening. Uh, okay, before I go to the robotic uh, automation, I just want to highlight the capability that you see just now in the user experience in the document management is actually coming from a component called Info Operating Services. It's a new component that uh, some of you may not uh, have licensed yet. So what is inside the Info doc, uh, Operating Service? Uh, this few component, right? The first component has is all the user experience component, you know, the home pages, the chat, the document, management, right? In fact, what I've shown you is just one of the component, right? The other component is all the integration. This is the part that uh, you can do any sort of uh, integration uh, between the M3 as well as uh, integration with other uh, info application, for example, the WMS system, uh, for example, and also the integration to third party application, right? Via the API. Right. Traditionally, the, the way we have been doing integration to third party has been uh, using the API call, right? But using this uh, particular component now, it, it gives us a lot more flexibility how we can do integration, right? Um, it uses a different method of uh, doing integration to, to us. It's a lot more, um, how should I say, more flexible way of uh, doing. I also have a security built-in. For example, how you can do single sign-on. As you noticed uh, earlier, even though I access uh, info document management, I want to go to info M3 and so forth. There's no need for me to, to sign in, and, you know, but each of this system has its own security, but we can configure in, in such a way that it can handle all this single sign-on and so forth, right? And then um, there's also component uh, on data management, right? If you decided uh, there are a lot of data that you collected, you instead of hosting it yourself, you can host it in a cloud, right? Um, in uh, in uh, what we call a data lake, and then 
you can then uh, uh, from there extract the, the required information. There's also a component called extensibility. This is the part that uh, you may want to do some uh, uh, customization of the system. Instead of touching the core, you can build extension to the application. As well as uh, a component called AI, and this is the part uh, it does uh, what you call a digital assistant, you know, something similar to, uh, you know, the, the, all the digital assistant uh, capability, even people use the, the, the echo uh, speaker, you know, that to tell the speaker, listen to song and all this same, same thing, you know, that uh, you communicate with uh, M3 screen instead of uh, typing, you can, you can uh, tell the system what you, you want the system to do. Right, so these are capability they can uh, uh, build in, as well as uh, IoT. You know the Internet of Things. You know um, this. This is an example whereby, um, let's say you were, you wanted to uh, to uh, implement a system whereby uh, you you install any sensor within your organization. You know that uh, take for example you you may have a sensor on your equipment, so when the temperature go above certain uh, 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 so called uh, 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 degree, then you know you, you you need to be alerted, or or you just collect all the statistics and, and so forth. So it has that capability to uh, of place for you to uh, to store this information. Of course, all this data that you store goes to the data lake. So the info operating service is actually comprising of all this different component and so forth. And, and it has a flexibility whereby you may say that, you know, uh, I, I may not want the data lake, you know, and the IOT, you know, I, I want to, uh, I want to uh, do it uh, step by step. So the base package is actually come with the, the UX, the integration and the security. The rest are the optional component that you may or may not want to license, right? So, but it give you a head start of uh, what you can do, you know. But uh, as I mentioned, by just using one of the component UX and the integration, I can already do the home pages, the workflow, as well as the document management and so forth. Okay. So now the next thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, basically the robotic uh, process automation. Now, imagine you have a scenario whereby you want to automate certain manual process quickly, right? The one, the word I highlight here is quickly without the need for long-term integration or interface using API. Now, for many of you, you know, we have, uh, we have been uh, doing integration for you to connect to a third-party application. But as you know, sometime when you want such project, you know, it, it will take time, you know, because we need to build the integration. So sometimes it may take a month or two or even longer, right? Whereas you may want something that be done fairly quickly, you know, let's say you say, I, I want something to be done over uh, uh, three days period, you know. So using the API, of course, is the most efficient way to to uh, do any kind of interface to third party application and it's fast, right? Because you're actually using the, the, the you know, the taking the data and process by the system, you know, without any kind of a, a, a human intervention or, you know, but but that, that takes time for you to do all the mapping and so forth. But if you want to do something quickly, then what, what's the best that you, you can do, right? So um, robot, bot, robotic process automation is just imagine a software robot is behaving like a person in your organization. So instead of that person doing, let the robot do that, right? So uh, how we do it is that uh, we actually work with a, a, a uh, company called, uh, well, a solution called Automation Anyway, right? It uh, does uh, things like that. So now I just want to start off with uh, sharing with the use case. Lah. How do you apply this RPA, you know? So we take a very simple case whereby, you know, today you may you may have to get somebody to go and ac access the Bank Negara website or even bank, any bank website to update your currency. Uh, table in M3, right? So we have a we have a, a use case here whereby we we'll get the software robot to do this. So what the robot does is that first it will sign to the the Bank Negara website. It will then download the latest uh, currency rate, 
right? And then it will update the currency rate to an existing currency file, right? That you have maintained, right? The currency file that you maintain has the different rate for different date, right? You just store it somewhere. So you just update the, the latest rate for that particular day. And then after that, it will sign to M3, right? Simulating I'm signing M3. Then it will just take the updated rate from the table in Excel and update to M3. After it's done, then it lock out from M3. A very simple uh, RPA uh, robot uh, that we have, have created, you know. So let, let's take a look at how, how, how that thing works. Uh. So now, um, so what, what we do is that we have created this, uh, this uh, robot to do this. Right, this is how the code ignore it. Now, right now, I, I just start the robot. So what the robot does is that it go to Bank Negara website. Right, it, it will extract the, the, uh, the latest rate and then it will populate to the, the uh, uh, an Excel file. Then you just basically download all the rate into the Excel file. And the next thing then is it will, it will take the, the Excel file and update to another Excel table whereby I maintain all the rate that I'm interested in by the different date. Right? So it, it does this. Right? This is not an expedited uh, video. This is exactly how fast the, the, the system works. Right? And uh, it's basically just uh, doing this uh, update. And after that, uh, it sign on to M3. Right? So now you're in M3 right now. It will tell the robot to open up this, uh, this uh, currency uh, table and then take the data from the Excel file that I've just downloaded and, uh, and then we'll update to M3. So when it's done, then it will just lock out from M3, right? So you can run this anytime that you want, right? And it's, you, you can do it, run it, you can schedule it to do this every morning and so forth. So as, as you can see, it, it, this is just purely a, a very quick way of you doing that activity without you having to go and worry about integration to M3 and all this. Of course, you want to do the similar thing using the API method. You know, this is part that we'll, we'll, we'll figure out, well, how can I go to, to uh, the, uh, the Bank Negara website, extract the information, then update to M3 table, you know. You know, th those, those are the, those may take a few months for us to generate that particular integration. Where else we're doing this, you know, is a very quick way for us to uh, be able to handle that. So, so RPA is a, a very interesting, you know, way when you want to do something like what I mentioned, you don't use the API method. If, if you feel that you want to use the API method, then RPA is not something that you want to consider, right? Many of the bank, for example, in town, they, they use uh, RPA quite a lot, right? To do, for example, uh, loan application approval and so forth, right? Basically, is they just, you just imagine you, you combine this together with, uh, with uh, uh, the, the data capture solution, right? You can have your, the applicant fill in a form, for example, and then use the data capture to extract the data. And then the extract data go to a cloud bear robot to then update to the bank system. Right? Traditionally, the bank core system is a lot more complicated and takes months before you can build this integration. Or else using this method, you can easily build a software robot to do this and update the uh, bank core system fairly quickly. So this is an example of what some of the banks are doing. Right? So in the manufacturing in the industry, these are examples of some some of the processes that you can use the software to do. Of course, if you if you look at this, is that you may notice that oh, some of these processes just now you already show me using the home pages. For example, when they come out the stock level no notification, by right? when when the when the 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 stock level go below certain stock, I, I want to be uh, to be triggered uh, messages and all this, right? Uh, if you use home pages and the alert just now, you, you don't need this, but imagine if you, 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 if you don't have that, this is an example of how you can, how you can use it. Like, you know? But there are also other, 
other ways and you know uh, area that you can use it. For example, in your HR, you know, when a new employee yeah, come on board, what what are all the document or step that uh, you need to do? Uh, for example, you need to create a user ID for the fuller. You know, you need to need to uh, to do a, any kind of a, a, a preparation and all this. All this you can use the RPA to go and help you to process this thing, right? And um, typically is that when you wanted to use RPA, there are certain uh, attribute that you should look for, like, you know. Um, and for example, you know, is it, some a processor that require limited or no change to the existing system. Something is um, very repetitive, you know. Um, not much uh, thinking needs needs to be done. All the condition are fairly straightforward, and all this you can, you can, you can uh, take this. Uh, to handle this, uh, you know. So, uh, example could be that you know, uh, you 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 uh, let's say you want to uh, process certain uh, customer order, you know, um, fairly, you know, easy that you can uh, handle this. You know, if you don't use the data capture, of course, then you can use this to go and uh, process some of this information. And then you know, um, example I just mentioned on the currency update. Right, and these are just some of the key advantages. Uh, basically, for example, a robot works twenty-four by seven, just like the data capture. You know, you can run it any time. Right? it doesn't rest. Right, and then uh, you can uh, basically cut down the cost it takes uh, for a person to process this. Right? so example of what what you can do with this. Now, this is a summary of uh, what uh, I've shared uh, for today. I'm uh, Five minute overshot. Um, the first thing is that uh, this is an example of the uh, first step that you can take towards the digitalization of organization. Right? There are some examples that I've shared that if you adopt it, you know, you can, you know, it's, it's the first thing towards that uh, step. Second thing is that you can do is that you can help to eliminate all this manual, laborious, and low value tasks by using the, the, the digital technology. Like for example, the data capture solution. By by having that solution, you know you you don't actually need people to do data entry. Like I mentioned earlier, you can also take advantage of some of the similar technology that user have been accustomed to, the chat and the post function that I mentioned. Right? It is just exactly how your your how your people are using the WhatsApp function. So we are just practically um, telling them is that instead of using a WhatsApp. Use the chat function and all the conversation. You know, it's very important that you capture those conversation because sometimes this is where your, your, the, you know, the asset to the company. You know, in, instead of leaving into a uh, WhatsApp, you want to 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 put in in the the domain of the company. You know, so you know the the intent then is that uh, everybody can view that information. You can review it, right, and so forth. And then the intelligence stay within the company. That's that's what uh, we are we wanted to use. So a lot of time is that uh, we're just mimicking some of this uh, technology, and so forth. And then the fourth way is that uh, we introduce a very structured document management, right, to make sure that all those uh, uh, document are managed properly and very easily accessible to uh, to anybody, right. So it's a responsibility to you know all the document that you can have in the company. 